Hello everyone, this is a preview on pediatric orthopedics and sports medicine. A five-year-old girl with unequal leg length. Parents are concerned. She's not limping, no toe walking, no back pain, no other symptoms. In physical examination, the difference between the legs in length is 0.5 centimeter. Otherwise, the rest of her physical examination is unremarkable. A weight-bearing AP radiograph of both lower extremities shows a difference of only 0.6 centimeter. What is the best next step? Reassurance, limb lengthening procedure, shoe left, physical therapy, or stop the growth of the contralateral side? The correct answer, reassurance. She has no symptoms, number one, and the difference between both legs is only 0.5 centimeter. Treatment is indicated only when it's 2 centimeter or longer and also with symptoms. Leg length discrepancy. Up to 35% of adults have discrepancies between 0.5 to 1.5 centimeter, so it is okay to be unequal, as long as no symptoms. Causes idiopathic leg length discrepancy, a affection of growth played by trauma, infection, or tumors, congenital conditions like, for example, fibular hemimelia, hemihypertrophy, unilateral hip dislocation, or DDH. In one, uh, in one hip. Clinical presentation of leg length discrepancy. Asymptomatic if the difference is minimal, like the previous case. Otherwise, they can have symptoms like abnormal gait, tip to walking, compensatory scoliosis, back or hip pain. Diagnosis of leg length discrepancy from history and physical examination. You can measure the leg length using a tape measure from the midline, from the umbilicus to the tip of the medial malleolus. Radiograph also you can order a weight bearing anteroposterior or AP radiograph of both lower extremities. Treatment options for leg length discrepancies if no symptoms and less than two centimeter no treatment. Uh, otherwise, the treatment options are shoe lifts for the shorter side like that, uh, limb uh, shortening, we can shorten the longer side for discrepancies between 2 and 5 centimeter. In a skeletally immature children, we can stop the growth of the contralateral side. Limb lengthening, usually for discrepancies more than 5 centimeter. A 15 year old girl plays gymnastic and complains of lower back pain. The pain worsens with back extension. A straight leg raising test revealed pain in the posterior thigh which did not extend below the knee. What is the most likely diagnosis? Spondylitis, sciatica, discitis, muscle spasm, or sacroiliitis? The correct answer is spondylitis. The key word here to make the diagnosis back pain, and the pain is worse with extension of the back. Spondylitis is common and it's very important to know it. Spondylitis is a bone defect in pars inter articularis of the vertebrae is considered a stress fracture, as you see here in this figure. Without a slippage forward, spondylitis. Up to 20% of participants in sports that involve repeated extension of the back will suffer from spondylitis, such as football, gymnastics, and diving. Most commonly affected vertebrae is L5, L5 and less common is L4. Clinical presentation of spondylitis, low back pain that increases with extension. This is a key word, with extension of the spine. A straight leg raising test, the pain will be in the posterior thigh, but doesn't extend below the knee, which is well known as hamstring tightness. The best study to order for cases with suspected spondylitis, plain x-ray on the back. You can order lateral view and oblique, and you will see this appearance. This is normal. This is normal, like it looks like a dog. And here you will see the stress fracture here with it looks like a collar, a dog with a collar, well known as a scotty or a scotty dog with a collar appearance. Also, you can see it in the x ray here. This is the collar, and this is the rest of the dog. What is the difference between spondylitis and spondylolisthesis? Spondylolisthesis is the, almost the same like spondylitis, but with forward slippage forward slippage of L5 over S1. And this is the one you will need to refer to a pediatric orthopedics. Again, to emphasize the difference between spondylitis and spondylolisthesis, in cases of spondylitis, there is a defect or stress fracture 
in pars interarticularis without forward slippage without forward slippage but here in, in cases of a spondylolisthesis you will have the stress fracture plus plus the forward slippage of L5 over S1 management of spondylitis an non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug such as ibuprofen rest from the sport until the pain decreases a delisan can resume sport activity when they are pain free and this is the role in almost all type of sport to return back to sports after injury when there is no more pain brace or lumbar corset if the pain does not improve with rest a five-year-old girl with unequal leg length parents are concerned she's not limping no toe walking no back pain no other symptoms in physical examination the difference between the legs in length is 0.5 centimeter. Otherwise, the rest of her physical examination is unremarkable. A weight-bearing AP radiograph of both lower extremities shows a difference of only 0.6 centimeter. What is the best next step? Reassurance, limb lengthening procedure, shoe left, physical therapy, or stop the growth of the contralateral side. The correct answer, reassurance. She has no symptoms, number one, and the difference between both legs is only 0.5 cm. Treatment is indicated only when it's 2 cm or longer and also with symptoms. Leg length discrepancy. Up to 35% of adults have discrepancies between 0.5 to 1.5 cm, so it is okay to be unequal as long as no symptoms. Causes idiopathic leg length discrepancy. A affection of growth played by trauma infection or tumors congenital conditions like for example fibular hemimelia hemihypertrophy unilateral hip dislocation or DDH in one uh, in one hip clinical presentation of leg length discrepancy asymptomatic if the difference is minimal like the previous case otherwise they can have symptoms like abnormal gait tip to walking compensatory scoliosis, back or hip pain. Diagnosis of leg length discrepancy from history and physical examination. You can measure the leg length using a tape measure from the midline, from the umbilicus to the tip of the medial malleolus. Radiograph also you can order a weight bearing anteroposterior or AP radiograph of both lower extremities. Treatment options for leg length discrepancies if no symptoms and less than 2 cm no treatment. Uh, otherwise, the treatment options are shoe lifts for the shorter side, like that, uh, limb uh, shortening, we can shorten the longer side for discrepancies between 2 and 5 cm. In a skeletally immature children, we can stop the growth of the contralateral side. Limb lengthening, usually for discrepancies more than 5 cm. A 15 year old girl plays gymnastic and complains of lower back pain. The pain worsens with back extension a straight leg raising test revealed pain in the posterior thigh which did not extend below the knee what is the most likely diagnosis spondylitis sciatica discitis muscle spasm or sacroiliitis the correct answer is spondylitis the key word here to make the diagnosis back pain and the pain is worse with extension of the back Spondylysis is common and it's very important to know it. Spondylysis is a bone defect in pars interarticularis of the vertebrae is considered a stress fracture, as you see here in this figure. Without a slippage forward, spondylysis. Up to 20% of participants in sports that involve repeated extension of the back will suffer from spondylysis, such as football, gymnastics, and diving. Most commonly affected vertebrae is L5. L5 and less common is L4. Clinical presentation of spondylysis, low back pain that increases with extension. This is a key word with extension of the spine. A straight leg raising test, the pain will be in the posterior thigh but doesn't extend below the knee, which is well known as hamstring tightness. The best study to order for cases with suspected spondylysis, plain x ray on the back. You can order lateral view and oblique and you will see this appearance this is normal this is normal like it looks like a dog 
and here you will see the stress fracture here with looks like a collar a dog with a collar well known as a scotty or a scotty dog with a collar appearance also you can see it in the x-ray here this is the collar and this is the rest of the dog what is the difference between spondylolysis and spondylolisthesis spondylolisthesis is the almost the same like spondylolysis but with forward slippage forward slippage of l5 over s1 and this is the one you will need to refer to a pediatric orthopedics again to emphasize the difference between spondylolysis and spondylolisthesis in cases of spondylolysis there is a defect or stress fracture in pars interarticularis without forward slippage without forward slippage but here in, in cases of spondylolisthesis you will have the stress fracture plus plus the forward slippage of l5 over s1 management of spondylitis a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug such as ibuprofen rest from the sport until the pain decreases a delicent can resume sport activity when they are pain free and this is the role in almost all type of sport to return back to sports after injury when there is no more pain brace or lumbar corset if the pain does not improve with rest hip disorders developmental dysplasia of the hip or ddh very important to note by heart you cannot miss the diagnosis of ddh ddh ranges from complete dislocation of the hip joint means that the femoral head is outside the acetabulum to dysplasia of the acetabulum which is a shallow acetabulum risk factors of ddh breach positioning in utero or breach presentation especially in the third trimester female sex being first born positive family history very important to ask about family history of ddh other conditions related to prenatal positioning or breach presentation or narrowed uh, uh, uterus metatarsus adductus and torticollis are commonly associated with ddh another important risk factor is improper swaddling improper swaddling can cause ddh diagnosis of ddh in neonatal period very important to do screening from birth and in each subsequent will visit using barlow and ortolani either with or without risk factors so it is mandatory for all pediatricians to do barlow and ortolani for all newborn in the hospital after discharge and in each subsequent will visit if you suspect a case of ddh order hip ultrasound if the age less than four months from four to six months and ideally from six months plain radiographs will make the diagnosis as well will show the dislocation and dysplasia the best screening method for ddh is barlow and ortolani maneuvers during the neonatal period up to two to three months after three months it will be difficult to do that so you hold the thigh in this position the, th the thumb is inside and the four fingers uh, outside over the greater trochanter you hold the thigh gently don't apply too much pressure and you hold the thigh into the position of adduction adduction and you apply gentle anterior pressure barlow will try to dislocate dislocate the uh, head of the femur out from the socket from the socket of the hip joint if it's positive you will feel a clunk and you will feel the head of the femur coming out and the ortolani afterward you do ortolani after you do ortolani after and you hold the thigh in abduction abduction position and in this case you are trying to relocate the head of the femur into the socket of the hip joint if you feel the clunk and you feel the head of the femur is returning back and is easy this is positive this is a, a case of developmental dysplasia of the hip if barlow's and ortolani maneuvers are positive refer to a pediatric orthopedics you do not need to order an ultrasound positive exam is enough to refer the infant this is ap pelvis radiograph for a 14 months old girl with developmental dysplasia of the left hip if we look at the ossific center on the left side is much smaller than the ossific center on the right side this is the left this is the right and if we look at the helgen reiner line 
is drawn in the inferior portion of the iliac bone in both sides and Perkin lines is perpendicular crossing the acetabular roof and here you will see the location is different than here so on the left side the ossific center is located in the upper lateral quadrant while the ossific center on the right side on the right side is located in the lower lower medial quadrant this is a case of ddh on the left side diagnosis of ddh or clinical presentation of ddh positive barland or tulani in the first three months of life in older uh, children when they start to walk they will present with limping if it's unilateral or waddling gait if it's bilateral limb length discrepancy is one of the manifestation and the dislocated side will be the shorter side with limited abduction of the affected side Limb length discrepancy or unequal limbs can be detected by Galizi sign. Very important to be able to perform this exam, Galizi sign, by flexing both hips and knees on a flat table. And you look at the, or you compare the knee height in both legs, on the right side or on the left side. If you look at this, this positive case, this is normal. So the right side is normal. And this child is having shorter shorter the knee is below the uh, the other one than the right side so this is a case of ddh on the left side ddh screening by ultrasound at four to six weeks if you have a breach position in the third trimester so this is a risk factor but the exam is normal in this case order a pelvis ultrasound at four weeks of age ordering earlier than that like after birth will give you false positive result is a risk to have false positive result so it is important to wait four weeks and then you order the ultrasound family history of ddh also order and your exam is still negative order ultrasound at four weeks history of abnormal hip physical examination in the unital period history of improper swaddling you can order at four weeks also your exam is still negative suspicious or inconclusive physical examination you are not sure about the physical examination you can order also ultrasound at four weeks treatment of ddh orthopedic referral for pavlic harness for infants less than six months pavlic harness will be worn for 24 hours a day and the parents able to change the diaper while wearing the harness for how long to wear it for for 6 to 12 weeks Closed reduction and casting for children 6 to 18 months with DDH. Open reduction for children more than 18 months with DDH. Having trouble or trying to pass the pediatric board exam? We have the definitive solution for you. Presenting the Last Minute Review Series, a powerful tool for achieving success in pediatric board exams. Crafted by Dr. Osama Naga a board-certified pediatrician by American Board of Pediatrics and the editor of the Pediatric Board Study Guide, a last-minute review. Dr. Naga breaks down the most critical subjects in this series. The Pediatric Last-Minute Review webpage offers a thorough and rigorous set of pediatric board review sessions that are in line with the study guide. The lectures will cover the most important topics for each condition that a pediatrician must know for pediatric board exams, as well as real-life clinical encounters. The inclusion of a clinical case scenario, accompanied by multiple choice questions, followed by the most probable answer and a comprehensive description of the issue, will ensure test readiness for each student. You will be able to download the lecture's PDF files to make your studies easier, to take notes and be accessible on the go and offline. Based on the membership plan you choose, you will have unlimited access to the lectures for either one month, three months, six months, or one year. By viewing these videos, you will increase your chances of passing the board exam and gain substantial advantages from the acquired knowledge. Additionally, by studying the material and completing the AAP prep questions from the previous three years, you will greatly increase your likelihood of passing the board and will acquire a wealth of knowledge. Click on the link provided below to visit lastminutepediatric.com and subscribe immediately. Be sure to take advantage of our free video samples on our YouTube channel, Pediatric Board Last Minute Review. Good luck with your exams.